In this section, we will conclude with a couple of graph theoretical algorithms, one involving the lowest common ancestor problem and another involving a lesser known extension of the shortest path problem. In this video, we are going to talk about the lowest common ancestor. The lowest common ancestor problem, or LCA for short, is the following. Given two nodes in a tree, we want to find their lowest common ancestor. The lowest common ancestor is defined as the node that is lowest in the tree and that both of the given nodes are descendant from. For example, in this tree, if given 8 and 7, their LCA would be 6. If given 2 and 4, their LCA would be 1. Let's consider the same tree again. It has the following Euler tour. The Euler tour is a special kind of tree traversal that is similar with a depth first search, but that also outputs the parent between each successive children outputs. So for example, you can see that it proceeds just like a depth first search up until 8, going 1, 2, 6, and 8, but then it outputs 6. After that it outputs 7, and then 6 again. And it goes the same for the entire tree. So if we have the Euler tour computed, let's also compute depth. Depth of i is the depth of node i. We have written the depths here for each node. Then the LCA of a and b is simply the minimum out of this expression. So first of all, we find the first occurrence of a in Euler and the first occurrence of b in the Euler tour. Then we take the minimum out of the depths of the Euler values between those two positions. So you can see that we have reduced the problem to a range minimum query. Let's write an example. Depth of 8 is 3. Depth of 7 is also 3. The first occurrence of 8 is on position 3. The first occurrence of 7 is on position 5. And the minimum between depth of Euler 3, depth of Euler and 4, and the depth of Euler of 5 is node 6, because we have to look at these positions. The minimum is 6 with depth 2, so 6 is the LCA of 8 and 7. Let's now go into our code editor and implement this. Once again, we are going to use a Python class for storing information regarding nodes. We are going to store for each node its label, a list of its children, and its parent, which is going to be useful for implementing the naive solution to LCA. Let's now implement the Euler tour function. So first of all, we check if the current node is a leaf, that is, it has no children. So if not node.children, then we simply return a list of the current node's label, because leaves will only be outputted once. After that, we declare a result variable, which we initialize with a list of the current node's label. Then, for each of the current node's children, we extend our result with what a recursive call for the current child gives us. The extend method here basically works as a list concatenation. Because this will return a list, it will simply append every element in that list to our result list. And also, after that, we need to append to our result the current node's label. In the end, we simply return our result variable. This code builds the tree shown in our slides, and it also prints its Euler tour. Then we have a few helper functions that we will explain. So we have the getDepths function, which uses an inner function in order to compute a dictionary where depth of i is the depth of the node with label i. We use a dictionary so that we don't have to worry about how large to declare our lists. It's pretty straightforward code. The inner function takes as parameter the current depth and the current node, sets the depth accordingly, and calls itself recursively for each child, 
passing d plus 1 for the depth. The getPositions function works pretty similarly. It uses a dictionary for the result for the same reason. And then it uses a for loop in order to find the first occurrence of each value in the Euler tour. And saves it in the dictionary, which it returns in the end. Then we have the query function, which is very similar from the previous section where we discussed segment trees, because it's the segment tree query. The only different thing here is that our segment tree will store indexes. So because it stores indexes, we have to be a little bit more careful. So in the case that there is no intersection between the current node's associated interval and the query interval, we will return none. The rest proceeds just like before. But then we also have to be careful to check for none and return accordingly. And also because we store indexes, we must compare minimums by using the array parameter, which is the initial array. The build function for a segment tree is also the same, except we have no more lazy field here. So it's a build function for a classical segment tree where we only store the minimum. And again, we must be careful to store the correct indexes, not the values. Then we have a function that will generate a random tree. We have a label variable starting from 2 and an inner function that will change that label variable. This non-local keyword allows us to change a variable defined in an outer function from the inner function. The number of children for each node is a random int between 1 and 4 or n minus label plus 1 if there are not enough labels left to, to put as many children as this rand int would tell us to. Then we append the necessary number of children, taking care to set their parent accordingly, increment the label, and then for each children, if we still have labels left, we call the function recursively. The root node will always have label 1 and no parent. And we have an assertion to make sure that we have used the exact number of labels. The find node function will return the node with a given label. This will be useful for implementing the naive approach. Then we have the tests. So we will generate a hundred random trees with a random number of nodes between a hundred and a thousand. Then for each tree, we are going to generate a random number of queries between 10 and 100. We're going to compute the depths, the Euler tour, the positions in the Euler tour. Then Euler depth will be a helper variable, which will simply store a depth of E for every E in Euler. The segment tree will be built upon this Euler depth list. Then we generate the queries randomly, compute the positions, make sure that the first position is smaller than or equal to the second one, call the query function, and then we will compare our result with the naive approach. So the naive approach finds the nodes with the two labels, A and B, then keeps going up by accessing the parents until it reaches a common node in which case, when it first reaches a common node, when this process first reaches a common node, then that will be the LCA, which we compare with our segment tree based approach. Let's now run this code and see if the assertions pass. You can see that it prints the same Euler tool as in our slides here, and there are no errors, so the code is correct. Because this is an RMQ problem with no updates, we can also use the dynamic programming approach or the binary indexed tree approach that we have also talked about.